Let's take a look at creating a heat map in QGIS 3. So a heat map can be useful if you're trying to find the density of points in a particularly dense point uh, data set. So mo for the most part, you're only going to want to do this for point vector layers. And I have a point vector layer. This is Uber pickups from one particular day in the New York City area. And you can see um, some probable um, hotspots at each of the airports in the area. But you can also see most of Manhattan looks pretty evenly covered. Uh, but a heat map might help you better understand uh, how dense those points actually are. So in the past with QGIS 2, I would usually recommend installing a plugin to make heat maps, but the built-in functionality now is good enough and I would start with the built-in functionality. And the quickest way to find that is down here in the bottom left. Just type heat map and you should see heat map kernel density estimation. You'll pick your point layer. You'll pick a radius, and the radius is going to be um, in the units of your layer. So if it's anything but feet or meters, if it's degrees, you'll want to change the projection of the layer before moving on. Um, so you want this to be in feet or meters and this radius is the buffer around each of the points that is used in calculating the density. So 100 feet is probably a fine place to start. I might bump that up to 200 first and see how that goes. And then these, these rows and columns are how large our output raster is going to be. So our output raster is a pixel image created by QGIS by looking at how dense the points are around each pixel. Uh, a million pixels might be pretty large for something like this. I'll start a lot lower, uh, say like 3000. And you'll see as I hit tab after changing the rows, it updated these three other fields. And that's um, that's what you want. You don't want to have to set all of these, so I'm setting the number of rows in the output raster. It's the number of pixels vertically. And we don't have to change anything else for now. I'm just going to run that and create a temporary file for that. And you see that happened pretty quickly. And uh, it looks entirely black, and that's because our radius was pretty small. Um, and if you come over to the layer styling panel and style the heat map, you should be able to pick pseudo, single band pseudo color and see the density. Um, if you turn off the points, it's a little bit less ugly, but you can see it's pretty faint. Uh, because the radius is so small, it's pretty faint. Uh, but you can see hot spots at the airports and this weird outlier and this part of Midtown, New York. Um, so I'll create another heat map. And let's try it with the radius 1,000 feet and the same number of rows. And you see the radius is larger, so the, um, the buffers around each of these points is much larger. And it makes it a lot easier to see uh, the individual points, but also maybe it helps you see the patterns a little bit better. Uh, again, I'll change it to single band pseudo color. You can play around with the ramp here if you wanted to, if you wanted magma, something like that. Um, so you can see this is going from dark to purple to orange to yellow, and this is going up with the number of points that each pixel is near. The values here aren't 
particularly useful because there's a, a bit of math that's going on uh, when the heat map is being calculated. So in your legend for your map, I would never show these values. I would just show a gradient from least to most dense um, is how I would usually say it. If we go back down to the heat map area, um, you'll see that under the advanced parameters, you have some other fields you might want to work with. Uh, for example, instead of instead of setting the radius for every point in um, to the same radius, last time we did a thousand feet, for example, instead of doing that, you could pick a field, a numeric field in the data set that uh, counted as the radius. So if some places had a larger radius um, due to their data, you might want to do that. Similarly, the weight, the weight is going to bump up the number around each point within that radius. Kernel shapes are a little bit complicated, but it's um, how large the number is um, how close to the point within the buffer. Uh, so if you had uniform, um, every space within that buffer is treated the same way. If you have uh, quartic or triangular, it drops off pretty steeply. Um, so the pixels closer to the points have much higher numbers, and then it drops off as you get out to the edge of the buffer, that sort of thing. And um, that's kind of all you need to know about heat maps. If you're having issues choosing the single band pseudo color and having that um, function the way you see it functioning here, uh, there are two things you might do. One would be you could work on the classify. You can play around with the classifying, see how that goes. Uh, if that does not work, there's a chance that you need to open up the layer properties and go to symbology and style it there. I've seen that happen on on, on Max with QGIS 3. Other than that, I think that's all you need to know about heat maps.